Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play! Wait a minute. I'm not playing an Enix game. I haven't played an Enix game in a long time. I think the last time I played it was Actraiser. Son of a bitch! Another title from Quintet slash Enix. This is Illusion of Gaia, and this has one of the strangest plots I've ever experienced in my life. And it's a pretty fun game. So, we're going to start on this one. However, I do want to wait around on the menu screen to start the little opening sequence... demo, whatever you want to call it. And it takes a while to show up. This is actually a pretty fun game, but it's not the only game of this series. It's actually part of a trilogy. And I didn't know this for the longest time, because my buddy actually owned this title, but I had never heard of the other two prior to... Uh, you know, later on in life when I found them online. I'm not very good at either of the other two. Uh, I've only actually played the first one, which is called Soul Blazer. I'm sure a few of you know that, but uh, yeah, this is the second game in the Soul Blazer trilogy, starting with Soul Blazer, and then Illusion of Gaia, and then Terranigma. And Terranigma was only released in the PAL region, or in Europe. And so I have no experience with that game at all. Soul Blazer I at least tried, but I just wasn't a big fan of how the attacking worked. It just seems drastically inferior to what I remember playing from this game. So I never really got past the first 20 minutes. Now, that's probably unfair. It's probably much better than that. But, you know, motivation, time, all that stuff. Anyway, Illusion of Gaia is basically a Zelda clone type of game. It's another action RPG where you run around and do this and do that. And this stuff here is not particularly important, but it does kind of give you a background idea for what the plot is going to be like. And it gets far more convoluted and makes a lot less sense than they're making it out to be right now. Anyway, that's a little morbid. Hmm. Oh well. Skeletons are cool. We'll be fighting some skeletons in this game. Yeah, it basically works a lot like a Zelda game. You get different abilities throughout the game, different ways of taking out your enemies, but in the end, everything kind of relies on your basic attack. Oddly enough, your main character does not get a sword in this game. Go figure. Anyway. Let's begin a new game here. Push start. There we go. And that's the one thing, well, not the one thing. There are a lot of things I like about this game. One of them is the music. And surprisingly, you know, for a title that isn't necessarily as well regarded as a lot of other games, it has a really nice soundtrack. It's got a lot of variety, and I really like the way it's kind of put together. Anyway, that's at the end of the game there, so let's start ourselves with a new uh, game here. And I'm just going to leave the button types the way they are, because you only have two options, and I'd like to change only one of the keys. Mm, can't really do that. So anyway, let's uh, begin our journey. And in order to begin, we start at school. Standard rule of, you know, any old game. If we're trying to save the world, we must be, you know two, maybe three years old. No. I think... How old is Will supposed to be in this game? He acts like he's, I don't know, in his early teens, I guess? And I know one of the other characters has a 15th birthday some point in this game. So I'm assuming he's got to be around that age anyway. Anyway, a year has passed since he went to the Tower of Babel, reference to Final Fantasy IV, which came out, I think, three years prior? Meh. And, of course, it references other things other than Final Fantasy IV. I do know that. Anyway, his father died. Somehow, a little kid made it back when the rest of the adult party did not. Go figure. Oh, so he wants to be an explorer. I wonder if this is going to help his quest, which we don't know of yet, but we obviously know we will get one sooner or later. And that sound is supposed to be a bell, though it sounds like weapons clashing. Yeah, whatever. 
Anyway, demons have appeared outside of town, so you must not go very far without your parents or without their permission. And we have some friends here from school. Seth, who will have purple text. I do like this. A lot of your character, or not your other characters, you only get one character. But a lot of your friends and NPCs that you'll be interacting with throughout the game, they have their own unique text colors, which will allow you to figure out who they are, even if they don't say, you know, don't list their name above in the text box. Yeah, you don't want that. You'll get in trouble. Hmm. And this is Lance. And that's where they want us to meet up later. Let's talk to the, uh, it looks like a priest more than a teacher, but... And he kind of acts like one, too. Anyway, here we can head onto the roof. And this uh, is the beginning of the confusion. This is a dark space, and this is... Oops, uh, I went through that too fast. Let's try that again. Uh, I went through all the dialogue. Ah, whatever. Anyway, basically, he or she or it introduces itself as Gaia, the uh, source of... I don't know, this or that. Basically, Gaia will be uh, our save point, our healing point, and some, basically the way we learn new skills. Better not come up here. You have a bad habit of jumping down. Hmm. Well, here's where we get the annoying part of this game. The red jewels. Red jewels are... Not really currency. We don't have currency. We can't buy anything in this game. We can also jump down from areas like that. But um, what we have is red jewels. And there are 50 of them in the game. And if you collect them all, you get a bonus dungeon and a bonus boss. Which, of course, I want to do. Because otherwise, you know, why would I want to do a, an incomplete Let's Play? Anyway, this guy teaches you how to run. So you press over and double tap. And you can start to run. You can also, you know, kind of press the directional buttons to move over. And this guy will not let you leave town. So, let's kind of go exploring here. This... Will's going to kind of narrate a lot of what goes on in this game, so... Going to be prepared for that. Personally, I like narration. It's not particularly great in this game. It's really good in a lot of films that do it well, such as Fight Club. But, you know, that's just me. Anyway... Let's enter our own house. And this is our Aunt Lola. Hmm. Oh, time to go outside and play. Who's upstairs? Ah, Bill. I'm assuming that's our uncle. <laughs> no initiative. Nope. I have no initiative at all. I'm just a little kid running around doing who knows what. Strange merchants doing business. And that's one of them. Selling weapons to use to fight demons. But you won't sell one to a child, which means we have to rely on our not sword. Cooking in the pot. Oh, okay. Sure, why not? And we can just jump down random spots. That'll become important on finding our way through the game later on. Oh, nice. And this is where Eric lives biggest house in all of South Cape, and he's a rich some bitch. Where's all my money? Hmm. The little things? No, it's usually the good jobs or the not good jobs. Anyway, whoa, she's on fire. How is being on fire a treatment? Hmm. Anyway, what's up here? Here's the roof. One, two, three, four, five. What? Oh, it's, um... I don't know. Stop and go. I can't remember what the name of this game is. Green, red light, green light. There we go. Anyway, let's jump down here. <laughs> Scaring the adults. Always, always. <laughs> ah, strange stars approaching the Earth. That can't be important later on in the game, can it? Sorry for Seth. His parents fight every day. Really? Whoa! I got attacked! Ah, oh, and that's Seth's house. Okay. Apparently, his uh, parents don't get along all that well. Oh. 
I wonder if he's wasting his money gambling or at the bar or something. Well, that's kind of depressing. Let's do something that's not so depressing. Let's go talk to somebody more interesting. This is Lance's house. Let's check out uh, what's going on here. Here. Bleh. Oh, yeah. Right. Oddly enough, well, not oddly enough, I believe Lance's father is another one, there's another red jewel, that uh, was with our party at the Tower of Babel, you know, all those years ago, or last year, or whenever it was. And it's, uh, you know, he's missing as well, though they don't, you know, overtly say it at this point in the game. Now, this guy is kind of important, and if you notice there, our hair is uh, blowing in the breeze. Oddly enough, that's a mechanic the game actually takes use with and shows off from time to time. So, let's head in here, which is where we're supposed to go. The Seaside Cave. Their second home. Well, that's awesome. Play games until sundown. What are you playing? Playing cards. Okay, what cards are you playing? Hmm? There's also a secondary narrator. Go figure. Will narrates, the narrator narrates. More, that narrator usually just explains how things are happening that Will wouldn't be able to know kind of thing, you know. Oh, you hit this button, so it's, you heard something opening in another room kind of thing like you would, you know, see in a Zelda game. The princess of Edward Castle has run away. Oh, she came to South Cape. Now, who could that possibly be? Kara? No, not that Kara. Or those! What are you doing? No! This Kara, not quite so interesting. Anyway... Anyway, soldiers from Edward Castle have steel helmets. Now, can I move please? Thank you. Let's talk to you. Not interested in girls you like adventures better. I feel sorry for you, dude. I really do. Anyway. Well, come over here and sit next to Eric. Okay. What should we do today? Ooh, I have a mysterious power, do I? I'm assuming these people have all seen it before. This is just, you know, exposition. But, you know, it really just kind of seems awkward having this kind of text here. But then again, it happens more than once, where they just kind of throw exposition in there for no reason. Okay, so anyway, we can move the statue by spinning your flute around like a baton. A long way? Well, we can't move it a long way, we can't move it past that rock. Anyway, push it and use the L or the R buttons. You do not need to do both. However, you press one or the other, and you can move a statue. Next, time to pick a card. Okay. Watch his beeping. Anyway, now who's going to put down some cards? Four cards, and what are we supposed to do with this? Pick the one you think is the Ace of Diamonds. Save state. Uh, let's see. That one. And that one. And that one. And that one. Yeah, they, they don't make it very difficult. Yes, he has a psychic power or some kind of, you know, sixth sense kind of deal. Which will help him throughout the game. That spinning baton thing is actually something that can block projectiles. And that is quite useful down to one of the super bosses in the game. Mm-hmm five senses and yes I already said that too complicated for you to understand one more game okay and their dialogue becomes the same if only you could do that oh well anyway now I'm going to basically there is a situation oops that just said it got dark unfortunately as soon as you exit buildings or areas or enter into them It'll have, you know, a little icon at the top to show you where you are, you know, some text there, title. 
and then it won't uh, you won't be able to move and if you press down or up or whatever it is to move you'll often skip by the dialogue and I'm probably going to do that a reasonable amount in this game and I apologize in advance for it it's really annoying but I just I never seem to remember anyway that fisherman if you zone in and out of here enough times will end up over here and he'll have a pot and I'm just gonna do this off screen until I happen to get him and then we'll resume there we go wow did that ever take a long time editing is a great thing you didn't have to watch that but this can take a very very long time to get him to spawn here for whatever reason and I don't know how anyone figured this out considering how long it just took me probably took me about three minutes without using fast forward to zone in and out over and over again until this happened anyway once he appears here we can get a red jewel now you must 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 do this now and this is one of the really annoying parts about this game red jewels especially the early ones in the game the first 20 or so are missable permanently missable so you must 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 do things you know must get them right as soon as you can do not you know skip over them until later you know if you're having troubles you know consult a walkthrough or watch the video because I'll be able to find them all anyway lifted the strange teapot anyway yeah so he finally caught the thing he was trying to catch now in order to do anything with these red jewels, we need to head not this way. We need to go up here, up here, and over here. And we'll go head down here and talk to this guy. This is the jeweler Gem. He is the one, I, I don't know why it says he controls the seven seas. That might be a reference to Soul Blazer, because I know he does have a part in that game, though I won't say anything about it until later, because that would spoil things. But yeah it has no bearing to this plot at all anyway what's your business um sure i just wanted to see you oh once you hold up all the red jewels you'll have to come running to my place okay so basically yeah, he collects the red jewels you give him the red jewels and based on the list you get a certain item or power up Be looking at his inventory here we just got the herb for getting three gems. Once we get five, we can get uh, a point into our defense, and then an HP boost, and then a strength boost, then an upgrade to a power we don't have yet, another upgrade to a power we don't have yet, and finally, at the very end of the game, we get access to his secrets, which is pretty cool. However, you want to kind of keep up appearances and as he says he's a master of disguise no clip from that turtle movie thing whatever anyway um yeah so yeah he'll be in other villages and he'll look different so you want to talk to everybody when you get there so you can exchange the items with him but anyway what's all this talk about uh, the princess Kara coming here let's find out wow long video let's find out next time Anyway, that's all for this episode, and I'll see you guys next time.